Hello and welcome to Differential Discussions. I'm Melissa. And I'm Dave. And today we're going to look at a slide that has platelet clumps. Mm, oh no! So, um, you know, <laughs> working at the bench, you'd probably have a platelet clump flag or something to that uh, effect. And you might observe that your platelet histogram looks uh, like all oh, like weird. Maybe it's like a shoulder or it's like bumpy or there's not much of a platelet histogram. Um, and so uh, generally procedurally is I'd, we would start evaluating the slide on like a lower power and check around the feathered edge and the, uh, the edges of the slide. So we started mm -hmm. on low power. Um, we did. So it's kind of tricky to see. Are you on uh, 10X? 10X, yes. Oh. So you can see some, it's kind of hard to see from up here, but you can see like there's clumps yeah. here and in here. And then I these promise little, it's, like... it's way easier eyes and scope. Yes, it's way easier. Yeah. All right, let's go down to 40 so we can see if we can see a little Yeah, there we go. We'll split the difference a little, yeah. Beautiful, yep. Yeah, so you can already see. I'll just pull yep. one of these in. Awesome. Yep. So exactly, uh, you know, so maybe it's smart, too, to talk about, like, well, why do we go to the feather, right? Yeah. Um, so when you're making, like, a wedge smear push prep uh, preparation, larger cells will typically be skewed out towards like the extreme edges and the body of the smear, it'll distribute pretty normally and stuff, but um, big chunky stuff gets pushed to the edges. And so when a bunch of platelets get stuck together, it is the most logical place to look for these. And um, you'll probably see clumps in the body of the smear too, but they will be in larger concentration um, over at the edges. Um, so I would always do like a feathered edge and like an edge scan, like along the, along the edge. Um, yep. Bingo. There they are, right? Yeah. Let's go down to 100 so we can see what they look like up close. Sure. <clears throat> Other things that might accompany a slide that's clumped too is you might see fibrin strands. So we'll keep an eye out for uh, for fibrin too. Yeah, with yeah. these types of platelet clumps, definitely, because these are huge clumps and they're spread all over. And this is most likely from a poor blood draw. Yeah, yeah. And so that's the good point. So this is a pre-analytical interference, right? So during the process of specimen collection, um, maybe it was a slow draw, um, you know, maybe it was a bit traumatic, right? So like the phleb at the fish around a little bit, right? And um, uh, essentially if the anticoagulant isn't mixing, oh, beautiful, geez. I found every platelet in this person right here in this field. Um, yeah, so so uh, during cl specimen collection, you know, um, we get all these platelet activation and they do their thing. What do they do, Melissa? There's like a shape change and like a... Oh, yeah. They're like secreting stuff or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's a lot of them here. And because it's this like... is... Be because of a poor blood draw, they're all clumped. They're all jumping all together. When you're dealing with a platelet clumper, which is typically somebody who has an antibody against a platelet antigen, they don't usually look like this, right? They they look more like twos or threes or fours of platelets clumped together, and they're spread throughout the whole slide rather than condensed to the feathered edge. We can go back towards the, the actual reading area and see if we can see any in there too. Let me that, oh, can you strip. see it? I was going to say, yeah. can you guys see it? There's a nice fibrin strand kind of going across here. Yep. Yeah, and sometimes it just might look like, uh, yeah, it's they're typically like a like a faint light blue, and it's just like spaghetti. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's evidence of uh, that right there confirms that there's a poor draw and that this yep. isn't. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, there's a couple of single see- platelets around too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But just- but we could see if you were to do like a platelet, you know, a rough uh, estimate quantitation, right? You, it would look severely decreased. Yeah. Um, it would be very decreased. Let's see. And so now, like, what you do with this data at the bench is going to vary by institution. Um, where where we worked, um, you know, depending on if we discovered a clot. So if we f- discover a macroscopic clot, we're probably canceling the specimen. Um, but uh, there we go. Perfect. You got a fiber and, strand uh, and a platelet yeah. pump. <laughs> <laughs> Chef's kiss. Yep. Um, this might not. This might be a good picture I already took them uh, <laughs> always ahead of me um yeah so what you would do with this data at this point um you know anywhere from canceling specimen if you discovered a clot and uh or maybe just um not reporting the plate the value as it is not representative of the uh, patient's primary hemostatic um capability mm-hmm. um we would do an unable to report and then uh, oftentimes append a comment to give an idea of how many platelets there might be, right? A qualitative um, estimate. Yeah, we might say uh, they're clumped, but hey, looks adequate, right? Judging by the huge, you know, clumps of platelets on the end, like they probably have a normal platelet count. Um, but every institution is going to vary, uh, follow mm-hmm. SOP. Yes, and that's very different from, well, it'll still vary by institution, but that sort of procedure for canceling or not reporting the platelet is going to be different from if you have a platelet clumper. So if someone has an autoantibody, you can't just cancel it every time. So you're going to have to try different things. So you may have read that you try different anticoagulants, right? Some places use sodium citrate. Some will use the yellow top tube. I'm forgetting the anticoagulant in it right now. ACD? I forget too. Yeah, that's ACD yellow. Yep. That yeah, I right. think it's ACD. Um, it, so it just depends on your institution and there'll be different protocols for that. But then your phlebotomists or your techs in the lab, depending on if you draw blood or not, if, you know, if the laboratorians draw the blood or if it's you have phlebs that draw the blood, um, you would have to remember to draw a purple top tube and to draw a blue or yellow or whatever is validated for your institution because you want to have that procedure validated. But it's a very different process versus for having clumps like we're looking at here, which is from a poor, poor blood draw, to having clumps from a platelet clump or someone with an autoantibody. So just keep that in mind. And you know, when you're at your institution, they'll teach you exactly what it is. But those are the two basically reasons you, you one is a poor pre-analytical variable and one is an actual pathophysiology yep yep that you just gotta deal with yep and when those patients are inpatients and you're dealing with them every few hours <laughs> and you're like hey listen can you stop ordering <laughs> like oh please um, <laughs> did you do anything yeah. to this patient no why are you ordering <laughs> another platelet count <laughs> Yeah, and, and the liquid anticoagulants, they present a little bit of a challenge too, because then you have to like correct for the volume displacement of the yep. liquid anticoagulant. Um, so you get to kind of like math your way to a uh, platelet value. But, you know, life is a heme tech. <laughs> the good stuff. It is. So this is what you see visually with your platelet clumps and your fibrin strands when you're dealing with a poor blood draw, unless the specimen just right out clotted. Yeah, true. But I think that's all we have for this video. So thanks for watching. Yeah, thank you for your time.